Hey folks, Petula here and today let's talk about trust. In particular, when you're starting with your new Agile team. So there you are, all happy and vibrant. It's gonna be your first day as a new coach for that team. And if you're anything like me, your mind is already racing with many, many ideas on how the relationship will be like. After many mistakes over the years, I finally understood what it takes to build trust with agile teams or with just, you know, teams, period. So for today, I'm gonna tell you four things that I apply consistently with success, and I hope you find that useful. So let's get started. Don't come in guns a blazing. I know many people might just think like, well, I'm the new agile coach, I have to be helpful. And there's a reason why there's a 90 day probation, what happens after that, after that period, etc. I used to think the same, and you're right, you have to show value. But as it turns out, there are many, many ways of showing value. And defending your you know, opinions a little bit too aggressively, almost being dogmatic on agile, is not one. Now, no matter how eager you are to showcase your skills, to be helpful, just tone it down. Just don't be too adamant on your views. Not if you have, you know, if you want to have the team trust you. Trust is friends with respect. And a great way to show respect is to acknowledge that the team already works without you and maybe rather well. So honor their past listen to their stories, you will notice that you can actually be very, very helpful when you start listening. So get curious, curious on the right way, and start asking questions about the things they've already done and tried. And most importantly, where do they want to improve next? I mean, working with affinity is really a great way of doing things. So the team will be very pleased and will be very happy that you are joining in to support their agenda. And, you know, helping them to succeed qualifies you as part of the team or at least makes you a very good ally. Get to know people individually. A team is made of individuals. And, you know, you show up for supporting the team, but you you don't gain trust with a thing with a construct you gain trust with people if there is one team member that doesn't trust you then the team doesn't trust you know who are the members of the teams know their names discover who they are you know as people uh, it certainly helps knowing do they live with family do they rather travel every single opportunity they get or they prefer to get cozy with a book um, you know do they have kids what's the name of their pets ask away, really have fun in the process. You're connecting with people. Um, You know, I myself, I like to draw little depictions of the, you know, when I first start with my teams, I don't keep those forever, but I keep them for a while. And I think for me, uh, it it definitely helps me to see, uh, you know, in the mind map, I get Cindy, I draw her with her blue hair in the center of her life. And then on the right, then I draw her dog named Bobby. And then I have spidery legs all over in the mind map showing me what are, you know, the, uh, what are her hobbies? What are her hopes and dreams? You don't need to draw mind maps if you don't want, but you get the idea. I'm just suggesting that you do something that helps you retain all of that information very, very quickly. We are injecting steroids in your relationship making. We are gaining like weeks ahead in just a matter of a few days. So we do that because people really do appreciate being valued, being remembered, um, and, you know, just plain simple. People love being considered. And hey, you can even show your drawings to the team if you're, you know, that proud. There is no shame on that. It actually there's a lot of fun to be had in the process. And I even had team members uh, taking those little depictions and transforming that into their team avatars in the Kanban board. Be vulnerable. Here is how this works. Reciprocity. You share some, I share some. If you're only asking questions but never answering any, you're never giving anything about yourself, that's kind of creepy. I mean, people will be asking, what are they hiding? <laughs> and, uh, you know, at least that doesn't inspire trust at all. I don't know about you, but I don't trust people that, you know, that I don't know anything about them. Not knowing what's in it for you kind of makes you an outsider. 
an outsider from the team. So they might still appreciate your help. They might still like you even. But what happens is that they will feel less inclined to support your ideas when they are less obvious or when they are kind of in conflict with what they know. What do you share then? Well, anything you want, really. Just be fair. Only, uh, you know, only ask questions that you yourself would be willing to answer. But be real, you know, share more than what's in your resume. Um, and it could be anything. It could be maybe you have an obsession with colorful felt pens and, uh, you know, you have so many you lost count. I don't know, just an idea. Uh, but maybe even how you were finding more difficult than you originally thought to navigate this new uh, position. So long as you're sharing something really real, you know, who you really are. Sometimes we are afraid of our own vulnerability because we think it might make us look weak. But it's quite the opposite. Being confident in your vulnerability actually makes you strong. Remember that even superheroes have their flaws and their fears. So you're not even trying to be a superhero. So why should you worry? Be your word. This is about making few promises and keeping the promises that you make. I'm a big fan of that. It's, you know, being in integrity, being reliable. That's really a big statement for people who don't know you yet. Of course, later in life, I mean, we all make mistakes. This is normal. And you will find that the more people know you, the better they know you, the more they are accepting of you breaking your promises. But not now with this new team. So be mindful that when you offer help, you do help. When you say you're going to do something for them, you do it. Don't keep making promises and then pile things up and finding excuses later. Or else you're going to notice that the excitement they had for having you around will wear off pretty quickly. It is also helpful to be a role model. You are an agile coach or insert here the name of, you know, the company gives to your new role. So walk the talk. Don't multitask and then tell your team not to do so. Don't uh, take forever to accomplish the things that you say you're going to do instead of being working in small cycles and working with small batches. Don't hide away and accomplish things all alone when you are pitching collaboration. It is very important to be a word and be in integrity when you're trying to develop trust with your new team. And remember that developing trust is not something that's done in a week. It takes time, constant work, and it's very fragile. So continue. It's something you're going to continuously be nurturing with your people. When you make mistakes, you clean them up. That's you being your word. That's you being in integrity, being vulnerable. Paying attention to those four things is going to be very useful for you. Both if uh, you're joining a team that's being imposed a new agile coach and they're like not so sure about you, but also for teams that are super eager to have you. Don't rush the process. Even if the team is like super excited to have you around. I actually have a not so great story to tell you exactly about that, but I'll leave that for another video. For now, just ask yourself, what do these four things look like for me? You know, how do you like to get to know people? Who are you when you are vulnerable? Think about that. And maybe, you know, what else would you add to, uh, to the checklist of uh, getting started and gaining trust with your new teams? Let me know in the comments. And I think this is it for today. I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.